guys, so today I'm going to be looking at people reveal the dumbest patients here. Let's just get right into the video. A father was told that his three-year-old daughter couldn't eat or drink anything after midnight before her surgery to remove her tonsils. While intubating his daughter the next morning, she vomited scrambled eggs, causing her to aspirate them into her lungs. Her heart stopped and I did chest compressions on her for 25 minutes. We got her back, aborted the surgery and transferred her to pediatric ICU on a ventilator. She will be on very strong antibiotics to fight off the inevitable infection that will happen and hope that sepsis does not set in. In the meantime, she will be brought back to the OR for future lavages and left on a ventilator for a while to protect her airway. Her father's response, she said she was hungry. I thought you were being too hard on her. He almost lost his daughter. He was terrified. He knew he made a bad decision and I happened to be standing there. He had assured me that he hadn't given her anything since she went to bed the night before. So he lied? Even after providing him with reasons for no food drink thing, he still chose to keep the truth to himself. It's so important to follow instructions prior to like a surgery or like, you know, a checkup, anything like that. Not me, but my friend's dad is a surgeon at my local hospital and deals mostly with trauma surgery and general emergencies. This is my favorite story he's ever told me. Let's call him Don. He was working on a really nice day in July and he was notified that an ambulance was coming in with a patient with severe lacerations on his left hand and a couple missing digits. They brought him into the OR and there wasn't much they could do to save the fingers, so he cleaned it out and sewed them shut. When the patient came to, Don started getting some information about what happened. Apparently the man was doing some yard work and thought he could use his lawnmower to cut the top of his head perfectly straight. So he hoisted his mower up and started cutting when the weight shifted and his fingers got caught up in the blade. That's like the most dangerous thing you could ever do. Don't do that. <laughs> like there's a different cutting machine for those kind of things, okay? The lawn mower is for the grass on the ground. About three hours later, Don was notified that another ambulance was coming in. He had severe lacerations on the hand and a couple missing digits. Don said it felt like deja vu and the injury was almost identical. Same fingers missing, completely mangled so they couldn't be saved. He stitched this patient up and yet again started asking about the incident. The patient told him that he was driving home from work and saw someone cutting the hedges with a lawnmower. Apparently he thought that was an excellent idea and decided to try it himself and well you know what happened next. So moral of the story, don't cut your hedges with a lawnmower. A lawnmower isn't even meant to cut your hedges. Why did he think that was a good idea, you know? He was like wow, what a good idea, I should go home and do it. When I was a paramedic we were called to a school gym because one kid lost his grip while climbing a rope and had a badly twisted ankle. When we arrived the gym teacher tried to get rid of us by saying you guys can leave. He is just being a little crybaby. He can walk it off. It turned out that he had several torn ligaments and a broken leg. Also, one of the kids had to call 911 because the teacher didn't think it was necessary. Oh my gosh, when the kids are smarter than a teacher. Jeez. We met the parents at the hospital and once they had taken care of their son, we approached them and told them how we were greeted. The mother instantly went to the school. Let's put it this way, seeing her face when she left, I can imagine what happened when she arrived. I would be pissed too. If I was the mom, I would be so pissed. Like something bad could have happened if they left it for later. And if they sent him home, you know. We filed our usual report with the fire department and that was the end of the official part. But since medics and cops get along great in my part of the world, we mentioned this to some cops we met at lunch later that day. They followed up on it and according to my cousin who was attending the same school, the teacher was fired the next morning. Like seriously, a kid is in pain and you just watch them and be like, what a crybaby. What? What kind of teacher is that? I'm an x-ray tech. One Halloween, I got an order for an abdominal x-ray with the admitting diagnosis being rectal bleeding, foreign body for a middle-aged male. I walked up to the guy to bring him into the exam room and asked him what happened. He started to tell me he was fooling around with his girlfriend when she put something small in his poop chute. He said it happened quick and unexpectedly. Under his breath, he was cursing his girlfriend for doing that to him. I'm sure it'll come out. It wasn't that big. It's supposed to be able to handle this. I got him on the table with no trouble, no grimacing, and it didn't look like he was in any pain, just mild discomfort. 
I believed his story until I took the first image. The man had an aerosol can firmly planted in his butt. Silence crept over the room. He knew I knew and not another word was said. I wished him well and I pushed him back to his room. Now here's the kicker. My mum works in pathology at the same hospital, so she received the man's hair product the next day when it was inevitably surgically removed from his rectum. She called me in and I got to see said can, which was covered on both ends with rubbers. I then knew there probably wasn't a girlfriend. Oh. Uh, so he did it himself. I've heard that this kind of thing happens a lot. Like, people go to the hospital with things up their butt. Stop putting things up your butt, people. A woman came into the emergency room with a six-year-old girl. The mother was frantic and crying. My baby's tooth fell out. It's my fault. Me, how is it your fault? Did she fall down or something? Woman, no, it's my fault because I didn't give her the good juice with concentrate in it. And now all of her teeth are going to fall out. Me, genuinely confused. Concentrate? Woman, if you don't give kids juice with concentrate in it, you know, the one with the big letter C on it, all their teeth will fall out. Me, ma'am, your child is six years old. She is going to lose all of her baby teeth now and get her adult teeth. She doesn't have scurvy. Wait, why is this not common sense to the mum that your teeth falls out when you're a kid and you grow adult teeth? I'm so confused, honestly. <laughs> What's going on? I once had a patient say, wait, secondhand smoke? Yeah, right, that doesn't exist. Baby will be fine. And an hour later, he said, no, my fiance and I don't want our daughter to have any of the vaccines. Vitamin K shot, antibiotic eye ointment, or PKU testing. It's poison. Poking her with a needle is worse than the cold she'd get without the poison. He then drove his newborn daughter and fiance home. Oh my God. At the hospital I worked at, when a couple left the mother slash baby wing, a nurse or nursing student would follow them down to the car and make sure the car seat was firmly in place and or answer any last minute questions. When we walked out with them to the car, it absolutely reeked of smoke. <laughs> they sound like bad parents. A med student asked this guy to lift his junk out of the way so she could examine his bores. My what? Your junk, she said, pointing down there. My what? At this point, I intervened. I pointed to his crotch. What do you call that thing there? Thomas. Well, get that Thomas out of the way, would ya? This is not the only time I've asked someone what they call their junk because they did not recognize the proper names. Thomas? <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Thomas, is that common? Like, where did I get it from? I'm just wondering, you know? Like, they must have heard it from someone. When I was working as an EMT, we got a call to an apartment complex for a 30-something female, seven months pregnant, having contractions. Pretty standard. Dispatch didn't have any further information. We got there, got her into our ambulance, and because childbirth is actually a pretty simple process, I was the one who took it, not my paramedic partner. We asked her what hospital she wanted to go to, and she said the local one, community hospital is what I'll refer it to as. I advised her that children's hospital would be her best choice, even though it was a longer ride, but she insisted on community and I informed the paramedic that was where she wanted to go. While on her way to community, I asked her all the information I needed, medication, past medical history, allergies. She had been pregnant before and it miscarried at seven months. After learning this, I advised her again that children's would be the best choice for her and the baby, but she insisted on community. I feel like you should really trust the person who's trying to help you, you know? Like doctors, you should trust them. For anybody wondering, we couldn't take her elsewhere, even if it was in her best interest, because that would be considered kidnapping. We were five minutes away from the hospital by now, and I radioed to them all the information that I had. The hospital wasn't happy about it either, they even tried talking her into going to children's over the radio, but no chance. She got the dirtiest looks from the nursing staff when we put in, and we went straight through the ER and into the elevator to go to the maternity ward. In the elevator, she looked at me and said, if I knew it would hurt this much, I wouldn't have gotten pregnant again. I'm so confused. <laughs> Why does she want to go to community so bad? I mean, if the hospital are telling you to go to the children's hospital and that's best for you and your kid isn't that what you should do like you should consider what's best for you and the kid oh i'm so confused i mean 
you're supposed to trust the people who are trying to help you. Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoy it. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.